Good morning and welcome on this very cold, snowy and freezy morning from New York City. This is Samir Mehta. I am your moderator and will take you through another very interesting and complex coronary intervention. Uh, this is session number 68. Uh, let me take you to the cardiac cath lab where Dr. Kinney and Dr. Sharma are standing by. Anu, good morning. Uh, good morning. I have had my challenges reaching the hospital this morning. <laughs> Well, actually, the patient made it as well as all the physicians with our uh, fellows. So, we are here. One uh, of the coldest days uh, <laughs> of the year. That is correct. Uh, this is actually, they say the day before it was the coldest in last uh, 200 20 years. years. Yep. Yes. Yeah, a lot yes. of years. So, the, a subtotal uh, diffuse calcified lesion this morning? I think these are the kind of cases we are encountering more and more now with the uh, increasing uh, uh, aging population and uh, more importantly, because of the diffuse diabetic disease. So, a challenge comes what to do with these kind of cases. So, we had a request of uh, diffuse disease patient and we found this is the ideal one. Uh, we will go through this uh, whole process and uh, we will take the input and uh, clearly we ask our uh, viewers to log in and ask the questions. Uh, if we can start with the quickly to head on. Uh, so, one of, one of the most interesting follow-ups I can give you is uh, we had an email from a physician from Syria who said, look, why don't you show us some uh, simpler lesions, some diffuse disease, so here it is. That's it. That's we, we they listened to him and uh, we had the ideal case uh, for that purpose. So, uh, we, uh, these are our supporters, disclosures, no change. So, this is a 60-year-old male uh, who actually just few weeks, a few months ago, I would say almost two months now, uh, started having angina class 2, no MI before and uh, has a high risk stress MPI for anterior inferior ischemia as well as some infarction and uh, transient ischemic dilatation. A uh, cath on January 8th revealed two vessel disease. It was RCA lesion moderately calcified and multiple lesions of the LAD which will show an EF of 40 percent which was new actually. He never had any clinical MI electrocardiogram is normal and syntax score was 21. So, we proceeded with PCI of the RCA and now here for the LED intervention and of course, the medical history shown here, uh, diabetic and also ankylosing spondylitis is on good medical therapy uh, with a dual antiplatelet therapy and so and uh, the disease which we will show here, um, and you take it through that uh, uh, ejection fraction is about moderate, it's still anterior yeah. wall hypo as if patient had a MI in the past. This is what is EDP is just about 12 and this is the right coronary artery which was stented before looks ok. Uh, same diffuse disease uh, some moderate diffuse in the AV continuation, but this is where we are dealing with the left side which is the left main is ok, circ essentially is ok, but the you know moderate diffuse disease of the two small size uh, o OM and uh, LPLs, but this is where uh, the LAD is, prox LAD is ok. But um, just after the second septal is where we start uh, the significant disease. But before that, there is a tram track uh, calcium again moderate, not heavy calcium, moderate calcium. And then you have this uh, second uh, diagonal, which is again 30 to 50. There is disease there, and uh, more ch uh, most challenging uh, lesion is probably the distal LAD, where uh, you know. It looks it looked sub uh, you know subtotal, but uh, truly it is total occlusion. If you can see it in this particular view, it's about few millimeter, five millimeters of total occlusion. Then you can see the LED, and actually, if you see in the caudal picture, so diffuse disease of the LED all the way to the apex. So the real challenge is going to be the guide wire in the distal segment. Yeah, the um, how to get the small. I mean the short total occlusion in the distal uh, part of the LED. So, I mean we have not seen the pre-PCI angiograms of the right, but it uh, does appear uh, that between the two lesions the LED is more severe and one would argue why did you not uh, tackle the more severe lesion first uh, just in case if you fail uh, there are other options. Yeah, no clearly that is a very important point except that the RCA lesion was 95 percent on focal Got it. and this is more diffuse. Got Second, it. if you go back to the LV gram uh, and that is also part of the same infarction that ischemia, ischemia both, that yeah. it could be the distal LED which we are seeing is already infarcted. See that mid area of the anterolateral wall is moving and the inferior wall is moving. So, that we felt that even if we cannot get by some way the distal LED which is not a good vessel for bypass, so it is okay. We take care of the RCA 
take care of the mid led and rest can be managed by medical therapy and anu as a plan uh, with this moderate calcification uh, although more in the proximal you are not planning any rotational ablation are you no we are not planning any rotational atherectomy but i think calcium should always be considered um, as an important part is the same that if we are able to get through the uh, distal apical led the delivering the device to that area we may have some trouble since there is calcium in the proximal area. So, it just this to be kept in mind, but just by looking at the calcium we should not have any trouble in delivering lesion and we should, uh, should not need a rotational atherectomy. Going back to the point of uh, same this diffuse disease uh, and which vessel should be done when you have this kind of uh, disease is the same this is though he is diabetic and we know as a diffuse LED disease this is a kind of a LED surgeons even surgeons will not like to tackle this kind of LED because they cannot put a lima anywhere if you see Absolutely. that if you put the lima in the usual spot there is a diffuse disease further down uh, otherwise they have to go all the way to the apex which uh, they may not be able to reach there um, or they have to do two bypasses maybe a vein to the prox to mid LED and then um, uh, another bypass uh, can, just I to the can, apical LED. I can tell you any patient who needs a vein to the LED is much better off with the PCI. Yep, absolutely and actually LV somehow look, to me looks little worse than 40 percent. Yep. But two tests showed both uh, nuclear has a EF of 42 percent and the. Um, uh, Go back to the circle sir. Yeah. This is another, another yeah. diffuse disease. This is a diffuse disease where uh, same unless there is significant ischemia this is the kind of uh, disease that uh, is good for a uh, medical therapy again. Excellent Samin I, I know you have a very important uh, topic to discuss today with us. Good uh, then uh, basically our that will be the plan of this calcified lesions of the mid to distal LED syntax score is 17 clearly it makes it appropriate because of the high risk scan and the two points we are going to quickly speak is uh, the issue comes here that in this particular case so, uh, in a stable CAD that you do a complete versus incomplete revascularization uh, both whether you are PCI or cabbage and, uh, and latest uh, new device which have come up for our refractory angina. Uh, clearly the this actually we have the very nice data from the syntax trial and there are multiple publications besides syntax showing that cabbage was superior to PCI in terms of uh, lower um, MACI. Uh, lower mortality particularly high risk patient and this basically showed that when you talk a complete versus incomplete revascularization clearly that you do better job in the surgery compared to PCI. So, PCI you will say that you do complete revascularization in 60 uh, uh, about 50 percent of cases you see that uh, here 578 versus 510. But if you go to cabbage, you have complete revascularization in 70, 80 percent of cases. So clearly, complete revascularization is better achieved by the cabbage compared to PCI. Then, what about the outcome of the complete versus incomplete in both PCI versus cabbage? We have the data for the four years, and you can see here all cause death, uh, CV, the stent thrombosis, death MI, CVA, and MACI all are lower in complete revascularization versus incomplete. But look at the difference, difference is almost 12 percent uh, plus in the overall MACI group as well as the mortality. We are talking about 5 percent decrease in mortality with the complete revascularization. Now you go to the P cabbage group in the same syntax, you see there is a difference is still with the lower with the complete revascularization, but the magnitude of the difference is smaller. So, clearly the 3 percent for the mortality and uh, about uh, and the 5 percent or 6 percent for the MACI. So, therefore, just to sum up that incomplete revascularization does worse whether it is a cabbage or PCI, but clearly the magnitude of difference is much higher in the favor of the complete revascularization for the PCI group uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, the cabbage do a better job of the complete revascularization. Now, we also uh, from the same data that once you have a CTO both uh, cabbage or PCI group, you can see that if you have CTO your incomplete revascularization even impart further. Uh, the mortality and uh, MACI as shown the difference in the curve of the complete and incomplete on the left side for the PCI group and the right side for the cabbage group. So, that not only the incomplete complete, but if it is a CTO and remember we have done uh, many papers from uh, New York state database in the BMS and DES era. The once you leave the complete uh, totally occluded artery as an incomplete revascularization, it has an independent predictor 
of a follow up maze. So, then the question always comes what do you call as a complete versus incomplete and that basically is that since we calculate the syntax score in our patients. So, whatever you did a revascularization you minus that the water is left is called residual syntax score or RSS. So, basically RSS will become the new nomenclature of your degree of incomplete revascularization and you can have RSS of anywhere from 0 to 100 because 100 being the maximum let us say go in the syntax score. So, ideally is that you have full revascularization your RSS should be 0 and what we found the importance point of view that higher is the baseline syntax score and if you take a RSS of 2 or 8 as a cutoff that higher percent of patients will achieve incomplete revascularization. If you are lower risk less than 22 large number of patients will get complete revascularization, but you go to higher syntax score a large number of patients will be left with the incomplete revascularization. So, then question is which are those lesions usually we know severely calcified CTO bifurcation lesions are the one which are left for incomplete revascularization. Then what is the importance of this degree of RSS that is they divided based on the complete revascularization or incomplete the 2, 2 to 8 and more than 8 and you can see the gradient and more importantly gradient for the death at 1 year outcome. So, clearly higher the RSS particularly 8 is associated with higher MACE and higher death rate uh, as shown in this uh, very elegantly in the graph that if you have a residual syntax score of uh, 0 you will have 1 percent mortality at uh, 1 year and if you have the more than 8 you have 5 percent. So, 5 times higher odd ratio. Now, what about the PCI group because that is what we always worried about we know that you go for surgery you get full revascularization, but in the PCI it is not uncommon we leave many lesions alone and the similar kind of data this is the newer paper by Farouk on uh, the syntax trial particularly taken only the Texas DES arm uh, in these cases. So, similar mass is same that higher is the syntax score higher will be the patient left with the incomplete revascularization whether you call it a 4 or 8 wherever your cutoff is. So, higher is the baseline syntax score higher will be the residual syntax score. Now, again very important observation if you take a death death and Mackey or death MI and CVA you can see that this violet bar at the word and the, the vertical long axis that all syntax score of more than 8 with the PCI was very highly predictive uh, with a increased hazard ratio from anywhere from 3 to 5 uh, in terms of mortality and, uh, and uh, death and uh, MI and uh, Mackey. So, key is that 8 syntax score all of a sudden we see cut off at 8. So, you leave a 2 or 4 or 5 residual syntax score probably less important, but should not leave once you decide the PCI do not leave the syntax score of more than 8 residual and this actually shown by uh, all cause you can see here which is the violet the top graph in terms of the follow up mortality the Mackey and uh, individual mace uh, same thing uh, for other uh, revascularization uh, the um, indicators. Also important that irrespective of the individual syntax score what you leave in terms of more than 8 Mackey is associated with bad outcome as if this is a Mackey at 5 years the clearly that if you have syntax score more than 8 whether you are in the low syntax group intermediate or high syntax group you always have bad outcome, but once you go less than 8 you see the, the graphs are very clustered. So, the very minor difference so 8 is our cut off that should not leave 8 and above. Uh, of once you decide and there, there are a lot of uh, issues on this that residual syntax score uh, a boon to interventional cardiology, but I would not call it a boon I think that basically tells you that yes this is the right thing to do once you decide whether PCI that try to do a maximum revascularization. Mm -hmm. Then second point I wanted to discuss briefly is the refractory angina and how do you define the refractory angina this is a European society of 2002 that a chronic condition which is more than 3 months characterized by the presence of angina caused by coronary insufficiency in the presence of CAD which is not amenable to combination of medical therapy angioplasty or bypass surgery in patient with evidence of ischemia clearly it has to be the cardiac it is not a patient with the uh, heart failure sometimes and valve disease it is a the patient uh, the CAD and of course some patients cannot get a cabbage or PCI. Uh -huh. So, they also will fall into the category of refractory angina and uh, what are the management options pharmacological there is a lot of drugs uh, particularly the recent ones we all know 
ranolazine, necrandel, uh, l arginine and trimetazine. There is a new the sinus, re, sinus node reducing beta blocker ivibradin, which basically just decreases the sinus rate. And of course, the non invasive external enhanced counter pulsation has really set in, of, uh, in addition to cardiac rehabilitation, exercise program, and self management training. Invasive, lot of work being done in patients with a TMR. Uh, which only for surgery not percutaneous, angiogenesis field is still evolving, then there is a transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, then spinal cord stimulation, lot of data on the spinal cord stimulation, thoracic epidural anesth um, anesthesia, uh, then endoscopic thoracic sympathectomy, particularly left ga uh, stellar ganglion blockage and latest being the coronary sinus reduction stent. We act and then of course, ultimately many of these patients with a refractory angina, they will go for heart transplantation because no more options left. They already have few PCIs and cabbage. We actually had a review article about 10, 12 years ago on this topic, refractory angina. Now, there is a very nice review article by Tim Henry on the this refractory angina topic in the nature reviews in cardiology and they go through the various management options of these patients which are always graded and many of them have gone through already the PCI and cabbage and then resort to the various of the non-invasive and invasive means. The particularly of the evolving pharmacological therapies, the EDTA is coming back as you know the TAC trial did show benefit but is still questionable in these refractory patients and uh, the neurogenic stimulation. Uh, many of the activities shown here and particularly the spinal cord stimulation, lot of data have shown that stimulation of the spinal cord improves the exercise capacity. And remember here, the point is not to decrease mortality because these patients have very advanced disease and they are increasing in number, it is expected about 1 million uh, refractory angina patients are in the United States and uh, clearly with the aging population, we will see more and more of these patients. Now, there is a new technique which is not new. Because as you see the paper here 1955 uh, by Dr. Beck that scientific basis for the surgical treatment of coronary artery disease that this is coming back and what did they do? They basically ligated the coronary sinus and put a stitch increase the pressure and they found that by ligating the coronary sinus that you increase the back flow pressure and decrease the angina symptoms and of course, increase the pressure in the dog experiment and then clinically started doing this is the same time when the Weinberg started putting a lima into the myocardium and so and so forth. So, during those time period that surgical uh, operation of the coronary sinus is stitching to increasing the pressure so that you have back flow and increase the coronary sinus pressure to increase the flow. Now, this actually had led to uh, the new device uh, to increase the coronary sinus pressure back introduced in 2005, though it is a back modification and now it has come to the randomized trial published last week in the New England Journal of Medicine and what it is? It is called coronary sinus reducer system or coronary sinus reducer stent. It is the hour gla glass type of uh, metal stainless steel metal stent which is implanted on the balloon. So, basically it is put into the coronary sinus, you need to have the coronary anatomy uh, after the injection that is suitable and on those cases then you deploy. So, basically it is the over the wire balloon system as you can see here 4 steps and then you take the balloon and wire out and it remains, uh, it constricts the coronary sinus and goal there is that you increase the coronary pressure and that is shown by the follow up CT angiograms that device migration does not take place, there is a still a flow across the device and there is no uh, thrombosis of the device uh, occurs. So, this actually has gone through the various preclinical work and then the clinical work first data of the 15 patients were published in 2007 in the Journal of American College of Cardiology and which basically the whole purpose is that by increasing the elevated coronary sinus pressure, you do recruitment of the coronary collateral flow redistribution of the blood flow from the less ischemic epicardium to the ischemic subendocardium, development of new collateral blood vessels and facilitate the dilatation of constricted subendocardial capillary arteriole. So, basically principle is very simple, you increase the coronary sinus venous pressure, so backfill the pressure, okay. the backfill the pressure and therefore, now you increase the perfusion. Now, remember when you have the uh, in the epicardium versus endocardium and the redistribution that clearly the endocardial uh, pressure increasing the endocardial pressure compresses the endocardial capillaries. So, by increasing the coronary sinus pressure, you improve the endocardial blood flow and this is where basic mechanism 
of uh, which has been shown by experiments. So, net result is enhanced perfusion of the ischemic myocardium and consequently hemodynamic parameters and angina and symptoms will improve. It is such a simple concept, but really it took a long time to really bring it to and this randomized trial of 54 patients control versus treatment. As you can see that uh, improvement in angina class and mean change in angina class was significantly higher in the more than 2 uh, 35 percent of 2 class uh, versus 15 percent in the treatment uh, control group. So, uh, the 35 percent in the treatment group and 12 percent uh, 15 percent in the control group and a mean change in angina class significantly higher in the treatment group and so, so much so less residual class 3 and 4 angina at follow up in the uh, treatment group as shown here also showed that you improve exercise tolerance as you can see total exercise, exercise duration improved by 13 percent in the re, uh, reduced group and in the control group only it increased by 1 percent. Same thing time to ST segment depression improved and also the stress echocardiographic with the wall motion index improved although non significant in the coronary sinus reducer group. So, therefore, and what happened as far as the other th issues with the device, there was no m device migration, no device related injury, the although it was successful in 50 of the 52 cases, there are 3 MIs and 1 death in the control group and 1 MI and 0 death in the treatment group. So, therefore, it is a safe and also effective. So, therefore, now we have a new device for treatment of this refractory angina uh, at present. So, clearly I mean it looks like such a simple concept, but uh, it makes us believe that how how we did not think about and did not come to the clinical trial while these patients continue to increase. And I will we are ready for now after this presentation uh, getting to our case here which also has a very diffusely disease Open. segment. So, I mean uh, fascinating work on the coronary sinus reduction I am uh, you know one of the questions which comes to mind is what is going to be the next step in its development. Yeah, no I think it is a clinically in my opinion after this NEJM paper it should get a rapidly the Europe uh, uh, you know approval in the Europe and uh, and then soon uh, will come probably in the US we still have to do some the, because some of the center trial no? yeah. yeah some of the centers were part of the US also uh, in the study uh, with Tim Henry and so. Mm. So, clearly that whether FDA will approve it for clinical use to me I think this is in a some refractory cases and we have seen patients who are coming back uh, repeatedly after the have done cabbage have done PCI and then keep coming back. So, that this will be ideal device for that purpose. Now, we have the VL guide VL 3 5. So, 6 frame system yeah. yes. Since we are not going to deal with any bifurcation this white I think right. D2 should not be worried about that vessel. So, I am I am uh, you want to go same view 19 and 34 I think that is a very good view. The interesting thing is going to be which is your first wire which you will choose. I think we will same we will go with the fielder okay. all the way. Yeah I mean clearly the some people will believe yeah. you made the curve already. Yeah yeah have the curve. Yeah. Or ACT Turn was a 280, huh? Turn your face a little bit different. Oh, uh, ankylosing, yeah. His the uh, movement of the head is limited because of his ankylosing spondylitis awesome. condition. Move the, move the head a bit. Can That's you take fine. the pillow? It will be okay. Take one pillow. It will be okay. That's fine. So, so I mean, I already have a few follow-up so. questions on your presentations, which I'll try to take as you okay. advance the wire. Okay. Yep, sure. One of the questions is uh, have you started uh, routinely calculating the RSS? Uh, no, that is actually not yet. Uh, go bring the fine cross in first. Yeah, yeah. No, we actually I think the more and more data particularly when you are doing a multi vessel disease. So, one of the things I going yeah, back to the like case I noticed yeah. straight away you decided to use the support catheter. Yes, I mean these kind of cases you have to have a support catheter. Do not waste doctor. time uh, yeah. just just proceed with it. Yeah, because not only that even with a support catheter uh, the difference will come. Now, in this particular case the issue could be that should we use a fielder XT because of the small channel distally and we will come back to that point. Torker. No, One second. Okay. Now, One usually we do not try the torker, but in this particular case I would say will be the reasonable because movement in the calcific vessel 
uh, getting distal wired, uh, you know, transmitting your torque in that rare case. That is where you will have the challenge. Yeah. Are your surgeons using the residual syntax code? No. I think to me, the probably once they go for surgery, always issue comes that uh, you know they will be okay from uh, as we showed by the data that with the surgery that majority of them get a full revascularization. And I was surprised that uh, in uh, syntax trial, the surgical patients have. Uh, also has incomplete revascularization one third of the time, which is a little surprise, but majority of the time, uh, the, again same thing because those diagonals and OMs, which we call the disease, little die. Can I see it, the little die? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the per site of yeah, the, the total occlusion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what should be the plan? What do you want to use? Yeah, rather than making a issue with the uh, and causing the injury, so it's better just to go with the little stiffer wire. Okay. Because we know here that this is the vessel goes a little bit outside, uh, I mean up and then goes down. Now this is the, uh, your miracle three or six. Okay. Six. Okay. Number. I mean, this is uh, an area which one could have so many implications and applications of the residual score. Uh, do you think uh, we could reach a situation where uh, you would be stating that to an insurance company that this is the reason we need to bring a patient, he has a significant residual syntax score? I mean, that I think uh, the makes it a good point that particularly if you decided the PCI, Somewhere. tell me what to give, yeah, that once you decide for the PCI and then uh, the going the complete revascularization and justification by the insurance carrier will be, you will have a, a leg to stand on and making that recommendation. Right, that, that's a substantive uh, uh, outcome that data. Also there. Yes, and consistently, I mean there are multiple uh, publications, there are many others actually, the uh, data from Korean, uh, Korea, there is a, then data from uh, the acuity trial, so many studies now have shown this. Uh, the residual syntax score uh, uh, basically correlate uh, with outcome particularly more with the PCI group in my opinion. Yeah, but uh, now with this uh, the definite number of 8 I think mm -hmm. uh, provides you a little yes. more. Uh, yeah, some die. Yes, that is true. So, it is the 8 is the cut real off. cut off, yes. I think definitely there is some calcium at this level, you see that, it is a short CT, I think we have traversed more majority of it, this is with the miracle 6. You want to go to the same a small cone down view which you had earlier? Yeah, I am trying to see. And remember this event has occurred sometime in the past, patient never had any clinical MI. So, I am getting uh, the fine cross all the way down then see, yeah, now the vessel or outside. Looks, looks to be, yeah. looks to be our. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what made it is that the fine cross, you know, take all the way down, so that will give you some increase. Uh, How closely, tifos. Anu, do you watch the movement of the distal tip of the wire to know that you are in the true lumen? Um, I think the way the wire is going. It, it behaves like yeah uh, true without lumen. PVCs and right. I am not doing anything. It's just going by itself. That means we know it's in the lumen. So the whole whole uh, real procedural tip here was to advance the the fine cross very distally. Yeah. Take a picture now. And also you see I took the cone down picture before to know how the vessel is, right. which uh, but, was in the diagnostic. But that, that this is a very fine maneuver because often as you advance it, uh, I mean it can work against you also. Action and grant sir. Yeah, I know at the same time if you see by collaterals then right. you do have a contralateral in here, it was all anti-grade. Yeah, now the but question is okay. the same, it is not going any further, maybe there is a lot of disease in the true apical LED. Right. 
But now we see whether uh, the, uh, now it is able to go. Now we know. Yeah. Now we know. Yeah. Now biggest we know. challenge, we biggest challenge of now. the case is done. Yeah. We can put yeah. a run through here. The question is whether rota or no rota. Probably not, right? You mean the apical LED? Yeah. There, I think we do a PTC only. Question is for the proximal segment. If you can get your fine cross across, then we do say no rota. If we can get not a fine cross, then rota. Good. So no rota. Okay. The question is, you remember the, uh, the RCA that we struggled yeah. few months back? <laughs> This reminds of that. If you want to do 1.25, just to the apex, or no, just do it, right? Wait, wait, wait. Let's bring the wire. Which wire? Are we have there? it. Yeah, so now we're going to take this out. Yes, sir. No, that we can do with the dark. Yeah. Okay. No, you want to put a rota because that's a clinical decision now. In this particular case. I think we do 1.25 rota. Okay. All the way distally. All the way distal. Okay. So, if uh, many people, uh, Samin, would not want to use a rotablator, that's how okay. Should, that's no, no. okay. So, how should what should be their approach? Uh, I think I uh, hear you change to any kind of your regular workhorse wire, and uh, you start with the two a balloon. Distally, we actually have a two a balloon opened ready. So, not something like the angio sculpt or something, or no, no. I what think you you go with the regular balloon, dilate, but where you have the calcium, that's where you may have to use your. Uh, Angio sculpt or uh, even the new too small, chocolate balloon. Too, too small to diffuse a disease for orbital? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Way too small. Although, you know, again, the you, uh, those who want to use a um, uh, orbital will be fine, except that the distal segment is quite angulated. So, just have to be a little careful on that point. But yes, the proximal uh, to mid segment, you could have an uh, orbital effect. So, you would go with a 2 o balloon that is again not a you would go with a compliant balloon dilate the distal area if we are not going to do rota what would be the other option but the prox the mid LED where we know there is calcium that is where I think you will need angioscalp. So, I mean the coronary sinus reducing device could have huge applications. Yes, yes. One, one, of, is, the, as one I said, of the more promising uh, therapies <laughs> on the horizon. Yeah, I think the, what they need to do, remember what happened, there is a trial uh, which has been done in spinal cord stimulation versus percutaneous TMR uh, and, uh, and the same way uh, that I think they need to go against some other device, uh, your established treatment and then show that yes, this one will be uh, although very invasive that will be a right thing to do because always question comes in these patients that uh, would you get benefit although it was done very elegantly the that the no placebo effect could be noticed because these patients in this uh, um, uh, cosira the it was called as a cosira right, trial that, yes. that uh, the patients came to the cath lab and both groups just like simplicity both got the venous puncture both got the coronary sinus injection and randomized control group they did not do anything further. In the randomized group, they deployed the stent and they were very careful in terms of who will do the follow up. People who did the follow up were the not involved in the procedure. Yeah. Uh, just to go back uh, to the point, you know, what would be the wire selection? Uh, we have to give always a couple of wire selection because uh, if you see here, this is the cone down view of that uh, sm uh, total occlusion lesion. I mean very interesting, that, okay. very interesting question has come by here. If you were not able to succeed with PCI, what options did you have here? That is not a question here. Yeah, no, no, but it, it, it was, could, could be, to me I mean, uh, it could be that if this uh, totally, yeah, if yeah. this total, uh, we were not been able to cross the total occlusion, you can still do the mid LED and the area after the diagonal, it is supplying majority of the wow. LED. I, Samin, I interpreted this question to ask uh, what amongst the other newer therapies you discussed. I think that is oh, where, that's where the it question. Was yeah. very intelligently put. Right. Yeah, no, that is true. Now, only question in this particular case would be that you will do a, a therapy, uh, you know, some is, the stress test repeat again after opening the mid vessel because clearly that you need to take care of that part 
then uh, think about the coronary sinus. Now, tell now going so back to the point, point of uh, what would be a wire selection to be successful rather than the question of what would be if you are unsuccessful. I think you take your uh, fielder wire which will take you all the way up to the distal LED and uh, this is that uh, very important cone down view which is actually telling which should be a wire choice. Okay, the, so once you use your fielder wire and go all the way down, if you want to try with your fielder XT thinking that there could be a micro channel you can but uh, could not because we know this is a chronic calcific lesion unlikely that uh, wire would be of any use. So I think the next wire of choice should be either pilot or should be miracle but uh, I took the miracle 6 and this is uh, very important you see that how angulated it is that is why I think when you are wiring you have to make sure your tip of the wire is facing exactly how the vessel is uh, curving and uh, it was going smooth but still it uh, that was the key point there that that there is this is a chronic um, you know atherosclerotic uh, vessel with some calcium inside though we could not see that much calcium angiographically that fine cross you move get the fine cross all the way up to the distal part of that um, uh, total of the exit uh, port of the uh, CTO that is when we were able to make the final uh, exit through the CTO. Now if that would not have made the trick or the, the if the fine cross we could not have got the fine cross all the way down that is the time you should think what would be your next uh, wire of uh, choice and that could be just that you would have gone to confiance a 9 just to make sure that you will be able to get the distal cap. Excellent point. Yep. And, and the key is in this particular case before we go to any further let us start are we using a 1.25 bar in this case I will still have a room for renolazine because with that has not been started. So that uh, knowing that patient has just class 2 symptoms will get better by our interventions here but uh, then you need to show the ischemia on renolazine yeah so and after that if those fails then question comes what else you need to do now since patient does not have a heart failure symptoms there is moderate lb dysfunction but i would still give it a first try of the eecp now after eecp as you know it's a 6 week course 35 uh, courses one hour uh, is good for one year uh, actually it's a 2A indication uh, and uh, really helps uh, many of these patients. Uh, then uh, the the other refractory cases are the one if we have uh, availability and patient continues to have ischemia, knowing that there are not in terms of much symptoms, continues to have ischemia or you know angina, uh, then you definitely will think about uh, other modalities, whether it will be a coronary sinus or it gets a uh, an, uh, you know uh, our spinal cord stimulation and so or maybe a TMR right. this could be the case no bypass go and make the laser hole mm -hmm. in the surgery. Are your surgeons doing it? Yeah. Not commonly but this is the kind of case yeah. yeah this is the kind of case where surgeon even if you go for surgery they will not bypass the LED and just make the laser holes but to put the bypass if required into one of the proximal circumflex over an area and the RCA. And I think the bypass still can be done to the mid LED right? but not to the distal and that is the question is basically what to do with that. What speed do you have there the burst speed? Yeah, so the gradually it has been advanced up to the area of uh, in question. And what was the burst? What was the burst speed you had used there? About 160. Okay. And the 1.25. Think you were able to advance through the distal segment? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So one five balloon or two oh? We have a two oh balloon for the oh. distal. All right. We will have to put a two five right long stand. Yep. Two five thirty two. So a very unusual question has come for you directly, Samin. Uh, are you doing live transmissions for the India live course? I do not know why somebody would ask that but. <laughs> no, we actually you know what 
is a two it's a big story it will not be done in uh, one sentence first i was supposed to be in india and i had a slotted time at 2:30 on 27 thursday uh, to live relay actually on friday 27th uh, uh, from jatlok uh, me and uh, dr ab mehta but then uh, because of important meeting of the hospital i backed off and i am not going to india live then plan was to relay it here so then they say 2:30 relay now 2:30 relay means 3:30 am you know i know my staff is very uh, uh, you know cooperative but bringing them at 3:30 am uh, and uh, by the time uh, dr matthew told me that it was uh, uh, you know other sites have already been booked with the satellite timing so it's not possible to change it so we just backed out so no. this just happened last few days you might still see us in the invitation and the announcements but uh, we i'm no longer the part of the um, india live, live this live year unfortunately after being part for so many years uh, because of various reasons logistics but uh, you know one time I remember 3 years ago not only i was a part i flew that night and came back and did the, did the live case um, on the third day of the meeting yes that meeting has uh, has become a very powerful uh, source of uh, education powerful they have so so much uh, uh, live um, the webcast of all the complex cases structural heart disease cases is a great meeting it's honor to be there but we are going to miss that honor this year i hope that you can also get yourself involved in the other uh, very important asian meeting uh, the cit Yeah. which which is uh, in the last week uh, after acc in uh, beijing yes yeah beijing is the japan uh, i'm sorry but in the china yeah <laughs> has a very yeah. very large uh, road, attendance yeah. there we did not took a picture yeah we did the picture let's see yeah. no plus no we don't have one right there okay okay just okay. You are not. You are not planning to go to the very apical. No, that that is apical. that would be too ambitious. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is the post road. Looks good. Looks That's very good. Yeah. 2.25 long stand. Excellent channel. Proximal limit. Okay. Will be done soon. Okay. Tell us which balloon we have now. Okay. Go up here. Two or fifty. No minute track. We have wanted some view for you. Just proximal. So I mean, you do a lot of PCI internationally, also. Which is the longest stent you have deployed? Forty-eight, many, 48. many forty-eight, particularly in India, very financially economical. Uh, you want to go a little further? Um, but forty-eight millimeters, and those stand? are very nicely trackable. I think we are good. Can take a picture. Yeah. Okay. And pull back the balloon a little in the guy. Well, the distal segment is looking very good, even right. without the stent. Yeah. Mm. That's another great thing with the rota. Yeah. Get a 2.25 on uh, 32. From us. See the your total occlusion. Where yeah. is your total occlusion? Yeah. Exactly. That's fine. It's no, it's 30. right there. Yeah, yeah. This will yeah. go. Go all the way. 2.5. Yeah. 2.25. You don't yeah. have that Distally in 38. Yeah, I think the 2.25 does not make 38. No, no, 38. They only come 28. 32. Yeah. 32. Okay. The other thing you can do is it's the same stand, different balloon. You can go with the two five thirty eight low pressure, which is like six atmosphere. Then you post dilate it. Yeah, that is a possibility also. Although it's a diffuse disease. You uh, want to do that? Two, yeah, it does look at least a two five distally. Two point six. Give us a two point five thirty eight. So we can do only two, yeah. two stands. Yeah. Two thirty eight. Two point five thirty eight. Promus element because promus was done on the right coronary. No, no, no. Listen to this now. We are getting a 2.5, 38. 38. Uh, 38. Okay. Right. Open. 2.5, 38. So other choice was 2.25. Now 2.25. They don't make 38. Only 32. And of course, as you know, uh, here in US only uh, 38. While outside US, there are a lot of stands available up to 48 millimeter in length. You wanted uh, post dilation with what? Can decide later with a three or thirty. No, 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 no. Post dilation to the distal. You want to do two to five, or you want to go no, two five? This one five. will be okay. This one will be okay. You are still post dilated. Okay. We can take a two point two five long non-compliant balloon. You have the euphoria two to five. Or yeah, the three five. Amongst the longer stents, uh, which one do you prefer? 
Uh, I'm sorry, which one? Amongst Bo the 38 millimeters, equal. both are equal. Yeah, both. Then, uh, nowadays, actually, all three of them, um, the, clearly, that as you know, in the Evolve 2 trial, uh, their synergy stand did about 3 percent better crossability uh, compared to the Promus Premier. So, therefore, whether it's a right or wrong, but clearly that their newer generation will do even better than what it is at present. Anu, you thought uh, it would not have uh, crossed with the, without the body wire there? We all always leave the rotor wire, uh, yeah. okay. never take it out. Because to, to the delivery in case so that yeah, the region there is, I think you should pull back a little bit. Yeah. Don't see it well. That will be good. Okay. You want to think you are far enough? Yeah. You want to go yeah, a few yeah. millimeter more? No. We are down there. It's just if I want to get this to the apex. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now we are in the apex. Okay. Want to take a cine? Okay. Mm. It's a lot of diffuse disease. I mean, you want to go a few millimeter more? Yeah, I thought. Uh, yeah. No. No. no? You are in a way yeah, yeah. further down. Huh? Okay. Good. Done. Okay. When ten. Now this we are going to deploy at eight Six. atmosphere. And then go back and post dilate. Yeah. yeah. It will take a little time. Now, key is also what we start doing now that you do not do a cine. Cine gives you more, just make it a fluoro save. So, now stent will not expand, we know. But now you pull back and then we can go a little higher pressure there. See, the stent has not expanded there. Go back again. What, how high you went? Eight. Will not come out now. Yeah. Mm. Must no, this will be okay. We pull back two millimeter, and then I mean five six millimeter where there is a bulge, and we can go high pressure. Then so will be okay. Distal two point two five. What are you showing me? So this is exactly and Anu the situation where the guide, guide will get sucked yeah. in as yeah, you yeah, remove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wire will go further. Right. We are two point two five thirty. Yeah. We are two point two five thirty. Which is good. So I'm pulling the guide out. You want to right. hold the guide? Yeah. Okay, it came back. Little more. The guide is going in again. This may not come out. I think you may want to deploy it at ten. It's okay. not come out. Go. All right, so mm -hmm. deploy. Now clearly that always the issue remains. Now we are at 10. Yeah. Better deployment. What do you have? 2 to 530? Which will be very good. Okay, down. So now go forward a little bit with the balloon. So unfold the folds comes out of the stent struts. I am going to low mag. Start coming up. Good. You want to dilate here? No. Okay. We're going to put another stand. No. So, Anu, what did you do differently there? No, I think at ten it was letting the. No, no. I, I even after ten, I it was, it uh, was the balloon was coming. You saw, I got the guide out completely. Right. Hanging almost in the. Ascending. Iota, right. Those Iota are the Iota. important points because many times your procedure is done. Let's take this out. I think 30 and may the, not go in. Yeah, it will go. Yeah, and the guide uh, that uh, your guide induced dissection. Now you put another stent unnecessary. Right. So idea should be that be careful. You're I think uh, I can just tell you this was not a smart idea. Mm -hmm. Should have been a 225. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. if this is supposed to be done, go back with a 2.25. 32. Yeah, not 2.25, 28, and then put another stent. Because of the difficulties in removing yeah. the balloon. Yeah, difficulty in removing yeah. the balloon. Okay, let's take a picture. And, uh, let's take a picture. Very yeah. useful teaching point. Guide. Don't don't do it. Yeah. Looks very good. Okay. Yeah. I think we are distally enough. Yeah, yeah. We'll go with little 
massage, vertical displacement of the plaque. To our viewers, one of the uh, one of the things that you need to is that some many times very rarely suppose you have not been able to deploy. You know what is the other situation that uh, normally this happens, but rare. There have been cases that uh, when you are trying to go in, for some reason, the uh, the balloon of the stent uh, there has been a hole created for hmm. whatever reason, hmm. and you are trying to deploy the stent, and uh, there is a hole in the balloon, and you are not able to deploy the stent. So, same thing you can go to 12, 14, 16 atmosphere and the stent is not deployed that is the time you will have to come out with half deployed stent. Hmm. In cases of that situation you may not be able to get a post dilation balloon inside the stent in which case you will have to go with a two you know just a regular two balloon deploy the stent and then go with a post dilation balloon. Okay. Now, do a distal edge a little bit smooth it out. So, now we are dilated the distal segment of this uh, uh, stent at 12 and the proximally with 18. Uh, this is a 2.2530 NC quantum and now just a little 2 atmosphere distally that is ok. Now, we do the proximal end clearly we need to flare and the proximal we can put a, a 2.75. I was thinking more of a 2.5, but yeah, we will see pull back mm -hmm. more. This one we dilated at 20, we did little more. Go up. You want to pull back little more, yeah, but we had dilated put a stent there anyway. So, the, here we go 20 again. So, just to enable the passage of yep. the second stent into yep. the struts of the, yes. So, you are going to put what 2.75, 28. Let us see. Up to two the first subtub. Okay. The 2.75, uh, 28. Uh, versus 32, which one will be? Good. We we'll take a picture. Mm. Samin, I was also going to make the announcement for the viewers to watch the no. peripheral interventions, uh, which is on March uh, the 25th. Uh, how is that coming along? Uh, Not March. You mean uh, February? Yeah, okay. So I have February. exactly right. 28 will be. Can no. you give me floor? The wire is gone to something. Yeah, I have a little handout which had uh, March, but yes, you are right, February the 25th. And March 17 would be our session number uh, 69. Yes. How is the peripheral interventions uh, segment coming up? It's quite good. No, ours will be next month. Uh, next month, what day, uh, date you have? March the 17th. 32, no? Okay. You need from there all the way to the first chapter. Yeah. Uh, it should uh, 27532. 27532. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yes. Even nitro. Patient is feeling some pain. So, so far looking <coughs> nice, all the branches you know these new stents and uh, combination with the uh, rotation of threat means all the branches are preserved nicely stent fully expanded. Um, Chances are uh, that second or the third five, diagonal five, five. will have some pinching after the second stent no? Well, that is uh, uh, that will be the one uh, the, the work in progress, but I think yeah, should be okay because that is one of right. the biggest diagonal. Yeah. Now, we are 2.75. 32. 32 promise mirror. They should be having a soon synergy stent available because that is available in Europe, it is available in India, which is the ultra thin strut. The basically, the, the most important benefit in the one year trial uh, was just better deliverability. There are no difference in stent thrombosis, TLR, or so. In the Evolve 2 trial presented. Uh, in AHA and TCT. What has been the antiplatelet therapy for this patient? This patient is still remained on oh, clopidogrel. So Plavix. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Going up. Mm. Sir, 
16 now approximately we need to dilate with the what earlier balloon we have 3 o 20 Rio. that will be very good even yeah. good okay just overlap again you dilate uh, overlap area with the moderate pressure do not go right. to those high but uh, then we are going to post dilate this lesion and here issue will be patient has a good two septals and two diagonals the first one diagonal and first septal we were just distal so we are not worried about them second septal and second diagonal will be the one which we need to see good that was the what distal mm -hmm. one second okay. i want to see distal how does okay it look? everything remained beautiful including the second diagonal that yes. looks all right Why they even connect it to the balloon? I don't get it. Yeah. Good. How to teach yeah. them? Now, which is the, this is what 3O? What is special about this new balloon? You tell us how you use this and works good. So, we are, we still continue to have developments in balloon angioplasty. <laughs> yep. Now, actually, they have the small balloon attached to the fine cross type they call threader that over the wire and there is a small balloon um, 1.25 millimeter by Boston Scientific. Ready? Yeah. Yeah. And then 1.2 balloons are really, really very useful 1.2, 1.25, 18 atmosphere. So, Anu, this is a, a very uh, minor point, but why did you not start with the distal segment first? We are not going, this is a 3 no, no, balloon. No, 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 I oh, meant oh, oh, that the where you are, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that is right, I mean you start there and then right. you come back, yep. Oh, don't take a picture. Okay, so we, I think we are good, we are just going to take, uh, we took the wire out. We just want to give some uh, what we call uh, nitro and uh, nitro. A final picture. Rehabilitation, psychotherapy we say for the vessel. Rehab of the vessel for refractory angina. We the gave refractory some uh, diffuse uh, disease vessel. Vessel, nitro, vessel looks very good there. Varapamil for the distal vessel. There are a lot of people use adenosine, we use verapamil. Uh, and the really thrombotic slow flow, their um, your nitroproside and slow, uh, the good one. But okay, ready? Advance. Good. Okay, then so that then I'll f complete my presentation. Huh? Okay, yeah, well seated there, no? All the branches are there, distal flow is good. Excellent. And then we always teach that to use a last picture in a low mag, so your entire heart, so the wire perf and all the everything you can see. So I will always take a last picture, look at this beautiful. You know, now that you, you look at the whole vessel, uh, it looks like that distal part could have been uh, reached. Uh, no, no, but th this will get better. This will okay. buy right. the flow mediated vasodilatation. One comes back, this vessel distally even will be better. If ever he comes back, look at this. So there you let the nature takes care. All right. Okay, we come back to the point, um, the take home messages and then we will uh, get a final word from uh, uh, Anu about uh, the case. That complete revascularization compared to incomplete after PCI or cabbage is associated with lower long term mace including death. The cabbage is associated with lower ICR versus PCI. So, cabbage do a better job of complete revascularization. Then residual syntax score of 8 is associated with higher death and other major cardiac events. Hence, in PCI of complex lesions, 
with high syntax score, effort should be made to optimize PCI procedure towards I for complete revascularization. And complete revascularization here by definition is that uh, residual syntax score of less than 8. Next, of the various emerging treatment options for refractory angina, despite maximum medical therapy, coronary sinus reducing device seems to have the best potential in reducing angina severity and improving exercise tolerance. So, now we come to our questions, three questions that in the syntax trial increasing residual syntax score is associated with increasing all adverse cardiac events except stent thrombosis, target vessel revascularization, myocardial infarction, death or MACI. Second, in patients with high syntax score following strategies are associated with higher complete versus incomplete revascularization except PCI of all lesions including bifurcation lesion, refer patient preferentially to cabbage, PCI of all lesions except one difficult mid LED CTO, PCI of all lesions except of non-dominant RCS CTO and PCI of unprotected left main lesion including LED bifurcation except of OM. So, these are the questions. Once uh, answers will be posted as uh, usual uh, with the third question being uh, is the recent randomized trial of coronary sinus reducer device compared to placebo showed the following lower incidence of MI, higher CCS class 2, 3 at follow up, lower mortality, higher device related complication and higher more than 2 CCS angina class improvement. Okay, Anu now. I, I think I just uh, go, go over the same points of uh, say uh, wire how what was the wire how you have uh, you know chosen the wire which I already went through the other point I think which always come is why did we go to rota should this case have been done with rota I think we have gone over that point rota was not a must in this case but uh, in this kind of diffuse disease um, you know just by doing 1.25 bar we were able to get a good angioplasty result and came out with the uh, segment of, of stenting of the uh, vessel which we actually planned for that we did not need more than uh, two um, long stents uh, branches. Yeah, with the patent branches also. And the more important thing also is one other technical point that one somebody has to see is that this is something that we expect and we see is the apical LED which you see there right now diffuse disease. And in this particular view actually if you think about it it is a 2 5 stent but a lumen exactly may be just over 2 2.2 in that area and diffuse disease distally in this kind of case diabetic LV dysfunction long stent in the LED nothing wrong to check PRU is just on Plavix this question was called for and if the PRU is high more than 230 we will change him to the stronger antiplatelet agent. And follow up would be with just an exercise stress test? Yeah, uh, exercise stress test and same that uh, CERC would be left on medical therapy because that CERC is uh, hardly to a vessel, both the branches. And, it really moderate diffuse, and I, I expect because of the EKG, uh, I mean because of the no clinical MI that there is a potential for LV improvement because there was more ischemia than infarction on the, uh, the pre-PCI stress test maybe. Look, in the AP cranial view, it is a beautiful, uh, the conformability of the stents and I think uh, the sizing has been, yeah, this is the view I was talking about. Uh, there we go, beautiful uh, result. Uh, Samin, uh, final words from you? Yeah, no, this is a great uh, an idea would be that uh, we are more and more cases, we will bring a run of the mill rather than uh, bring a very exotic, uh, so the very complex which nobody would like to do, uh, but uh, we'll go through the teaching points so that everyone can start doing the cases which we are doing with a great success. Excellent job. Uh, I hope uh, the viewers uh, have enjoyed uh, this case and uh, learned some valuable tips. Uh, we will see you on the next session on March 17. Okay. Thank you.